Boa constrictors are some of the most popular pet snakes that you can buy, and for great reason. They are amazing pets. So how do you take care of one? Today, I'm gonna to tell you everything you need to know about how to take care of your boa constrictor. My name's Adam, this is Lucy. You're watching Wiccan's Wicked Reptiles. Stick around. Now you might be thinking, Adam, that's a tiny boa constrictor. You're right. Not only is it a tiny boa constrictor because it's a baby, it's also one of the things I want to talk about, the localities. Now boa constrictors come in many shapes, sizes, colors, morphs. There's really a lot to them. But in general, the ones I'm talking about are common boas and true red tails and Central American boas. Now I'm kind of breaking them down in those three categories, but there's a million ways you could break them down. What I'm talking about are the BIs, boa emperators, the boa constrictors or true red tails, and then the dwarf localities, things like hog island boas like you see here. Now let's talk about size as our first category because what's really important with a lot of reptiles or really any pet, is how big does this thing actually get? The good news is a boa constrictor is kind of the perfect size if you're looking for something bigger than the entry level snakes, entry level snakes like ball pythons or corn snakes. What's even better news is if you love boas but you just don't want something that might get to 10 or 13 feet, like you'd get with a true BC, you can get a dwarf locality, something like a hog island boa. Now there's a bunch of other insular type snakes. Insular dwarfism just means these animals are on islands, there isn't huge prey items, and therefore they've evolved not to get huge. So a hog island boa, which is a type of BI, they come from right off the coast of Honduras, basically those islands, and these guys are gonna get four or five feet. And I've even seen them as small as three and a half. So think ball python size or maybe even smaller, that's who you get with one of these. Now if you wanted a regular BI, like a boa emperator, something like Franny here, this is a male, probably about full grown, he's about five years old, maybe older, and he is going to get to about this size, which is about seven feet, sometimes eight, and then females might get 10 feet. But if you get something like a BC, a true red tail boa, you might get something that gets, I don't know, 14 feet. Now this is really uncommon. They'll probably top out females around 10 or 11, maybe 12 feet. And they can be anywhere from, I don't know, a couple of pounds, like a hog island, all the way to 50 plus pounds if you get a really big boa constrictor. Now this might sound confusing. So to really simplify it, if you're going to a pet store and you see a $50 snake, it's probably a BI. If you see something with a really cool red tail, like a Guyanese or uh, even a Peruvian, or my favorite, the Suriname boas, those are BCs. If you wanna know more about morphs and really get into the nitty gritty, I suggest going watch uh, Brian Barchuk has videos, Jason's Exotic Reptiles, Brian Boas. There's a lot of great information out there. I'm just not the right guy to tell you really specific things if you wanna know really sciencey stuff. If you wanna know how to take care of them, Let's just continue. And what's next most important, in my opinion, enclosure size and enclosure furnishings, how to put together an enclosure all the way around. Now, if you wanna see a full enclosure setup where I take an empty box and make it into something beautiful, let me know. Put it in the comments section. I'd love to make that for you. But otherwise, it really depends what type of boa you get. If you get a smaller boa, a hog island that gets four or five feet, I recommend you get something bare minimum four feet by two feet by two feet tall because they are a semi-arboreal creature. If you get something like a BI or a BC, I would recommend, especially if the animal might get 10 feet, get an eight foot by four foot by three or maybe four foot tall enclosure because like I said, they're gonna be found in the trees or at least a little bit off of the ground. They're gonna use the ground as well and you wanna give this animal the opportunity to stretch out as much as possible and get up off the ground as much as possible as well. So in my opinion, the most important things to furnish this are first of all, the substrate, which to me, something that holds humidity. We're gonna get into humidity in a second, but they do like it rather humid. So what I use is just a coconut core mixed with a coconut chip product. You can use peat moss, you can use a bunch of different things. But if I had to give you advice and you said, Adam, what do you use? 
I use a coconut chip, sometimes mixed with a coconut core, and I mist it daily. Next, get yourself a water bowl. These animals do love humidity. They will drink standing water and sometimes use it as a bath. They will sometimes soak in these types of enclosures. So I recommend something that is big enough. I use RO water. You could use water from the tap that is treated or just straight tap water, which I've done for years if you live in a place where your tap water is safe. And the easiest thing is to put this on the warm side because it's going to evaporate create more humidity, and also it'll make the water warm enough that the snake will want to be in it. Also, give it some hides. Give it some hides on the ground. Give it some hides up above if you are able to do that. The reason I love PVC enclosures, like my friends at Cages who make really cool enclosures, is because they have the option of screwing things into the top or screwing things into the side and still being very rigid structure where you can't screw in a hide on the side of a glass enclosure. It just doesn't work like that. So if you want the enclosure, the exact one that I'll be using for her, there's a link below and a discount code. But otherwise, it doesn't really matter what type of enclosure you use. Give them perches, give them areas to get up off the ground, whether it's you know made of two by fours or probably would be better as natural sticks. And this offers a little bit of enrichment too, not just because they like to perch and get up off the ground, but it gives them something to do. And I always change up the substrate. I always change up the orientation of the sticks, of the bamboo logs, whatever it is, I change it up to give them more things to do and more things to think about just every maybe month or so, whenever I clean the substrate out. I would recommend against planted enclosures that have delicate plants. If you're using a really natural type environment with natural plants, especially if you get a big 10 foot animal, use really sturdy branches, really sturdy plants. Because if you put in something beautiful in there, I don't know, Ethereums, Pothos, whatever, they are going to crush it. So make it as simple or elaborate as you possibly can. Just give them as much space as possible. The days of offering them a 75 gallon enclosure for a six or eight foot snake are like, if you're a good person, those days are over. Next, heat and humidity. I think this is really important for all animals. Now, I've actually been to the rainforest where these animals are from, where you could find Central American boas. So there is something I'll change in this care guide to a lot of other care guides. First of all, heat, really simple stuff. You can use either a radiant heat panel, you could use a heat emitter, you could use a ball, like a halogen ball that's covered so they can't burn themselves. You can use a heat mat as well. There's a bunch of different ways to do it, but the important thing is getting the temperature gradient correct. Same with basically not every reptile, but most reptiles, you want a cool end, you want a warm end so that there's a gradient and you want a hot spot or basking spot that's a little bit warmer that they're gonna climb on, especially after maybe first thing in the morning to gather heat or after they consume a giant meal to help them digest it. And starting with that basking spot, you're gonna want around 95, 100. Now keep in mind, this is a care guide, not a do this exact care or your snake will spontaneously combust. It's not like that, I'm not gonna pretend it is. If your hot spot is 94 or 102, you're fine because in nature, the hot spot is going to change every day. They're just gonna find something that is as close to ideal as possible. The warm side is gonna be mid 80s to low 90s, I'd say 85 to 90. Just try to get it as close as possible to between 85 and 90. And then on the cool end, you can go as low as 80 during the day and as high as 85. But again, low 80s, and then on the other side, high 80s, and then basking spot, 95, 100, something like that. Now, the one thing I would change if I did the video now compared to six months ago is I wouldn't recommend a night drop. I used to recommend night drops for basically everything. Then I went to a rainforest. I went trudging around the woods at 1 a.m. and realized it's still really humid and really freaking hot out. The temperature barely moves in parts of Central America or South America where these guys are from. Now I keep my boas at the same temperature at night as I do during the day. It might get a little bit warmer during the day because all the other lights are on in this room, but otherwise no night drop necessary. In terms of humidity, it's really debated. I recommend 60 to 70% and then give them areas where it gets up to 100%, like a kind of a humid hide, something like that. And naturally, as the lights go off at night, the humidity is going to climb to close to 100%. That is totally fine. Just make sure that it's not too low. You'll see a little bit of stuck shed on this girl. Just where I got her, I think the humidity was probably a little bit low. So again, if your humidity is 81 or 79 instead for most of the day, and then it drops down to, I don't know, 65, you're fine. Just get it somewhere in that area. I have personally found with my larger boa, Franny, she'll be out usually at night because they are nocturnal animals. 
and the higher the humidity, generally the more active she is. But that could just be something that I observe because I come down here sometimes at 2 a.m. and other nights I don't. Uh, just take that with a grain of salt. Now, I think maybe the most important thing when picking any animal is the behavior, just simply because if you want an animal that is placid like this one, or you want an animal that's a little bit more moving and grooving like a lot of colubrids, it depends. What do you want? If you want an animal that in the most part, if you get from a baby and who's well socialized, that's gonna be kind of chill, but not really darty, you want a boa. They are going to be nocturnal. That's one behavioral aspect. So they're gonna be out at night most of the time, or some people will say crepuscular. That just means active during dusk and dawn. If I come down at two in the morning, Franny's almost always out. Lucy's almost always out. If I come down at 6 a.m. before the sun comes up, usually they're already back in bed. Now keep in mind, I wouldn't call these the most trustworthy snakes, just simply because a ball python, I've got ball pythons that I've had forever, and they're never gonna bite you unless they think you're food. With a boa, you could still startle them. They're not monsters, they don't mean to hurt you. Just be calm, be confident when you handle these things, because if you get a big boa and it bites you, it's not gonna be a fun time. It's just really not gonna be fun. But I would say nine out of 10 times, if you get a boa that's well socialized, you're gonna have great experiences every time you handle them. Diet. Now, this is really important too, but not super interesting with animals like most snakes. Because like most boas, these guys are just gonna eat frozen thawed rodents. I don't really see too many reasons why you'd ever wanna feed a live rodent or even a fresh killed. Just a frozen thawed is easy, it's really humane. I've never had feeding issues with any of my boas. Boas eat like boas, our friend Clint at Clint's Reptiles would say, and that's because they are known for being really, really good eaters. It's not like a ball python where, you know, for five months a year, maybe they go off food. I've never had that happen with a boa. They eat really well. Just keep in mind appropriately sized animals. So the prey item should be about the same size as the largest part of the snake. So for her, she gets weaned rats. For my other, she gets extra large rats. And even one time she ate a rabbit with no problem. And last but not least, can you even find one? Can you even afford one? Price, availability, and morphs. Now morphs out of the way, you can get albinos, you can get uh, leucistics. There's a whole bunch of different ones. I'm not a morph expert. Again, there's better channels to give you information on that. In terms of availability and price, they're available basically every reptile shop, some pet shops, every expo is gonna have them. And in terms of price, it depends what part of the world you're in. The one boa that I got was free. <laughs> Franny was given to me for free by a buddy of mine who was moving into a place that couldn't have snakes. This girl here, a hog island, she was 250 Canadian dollars. So what's that, seven and a half dollars US. And uh, in terms of regular BCIs or BCs, like the Surinams can get up to 400. It just depends. Just look on Morph Market, look at your local shop. If you have a local reptile shop, you'd be shocked how easily they can provide certain animals like boas or go to an expo. Either way, they're very affordable if you just want a regular wild type or they can get into the tens of thousands for really high-end morphs, but they're really available. You're generally gonna be able to find them in North America and the UK, that's kind of the markets that I know, really, really easily. So there you go. That's all you need to know, well, not actually. This is something I should say to you before we end. Do your research. Just this one bald guy screaming at a camera is not enough. Still do research, still look into things, still get other people's opinions. I'm just one guy, this is how I take care of my boas, but there are people out there who might do things differently. So see what works for you. Observe, 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 because reading a care guide and doing exactly what it says is no substitute for observing your animal and making tweaks that you think using common sense would be good for your animal. Okay, that's it. If you like videos like this, if this was helpful for you at all, please hit like and subscribe, it really helps the channel. A special thank you to the Patreon supporters who knew about Lucy a long time ago. You get discounts on the merch, you get extra stuff, behind the scenes, all that, for as little as $1 a month, and that's it. Because we do videos twice a week, that means I'll see you on Monday, or Thursday, today's Monday, so Thursday.